Doki. All right, so we're doing another loop through group program over here, but this one's gonna do something that you can't just do by uh, using like the full group, right? Uh, in the last one, we pressed a button and we changed everything. You can do that without using a for loop. This one, you have to use a for loop to get to. Um, so let's look at the program that I have written out for us so far and then investigate exactly how it works. So at the very start, I made a cat group as a blank group, and then I did app dot single cat as a blank group. Um, I'm not gonna get into why I'm using app versus just a regular global variable. I suppose I could just make this an app dot cat group to kind of get rid of the question, but we're, we're talking about for loops in this video. So those are our two groups that we've got set up. Then I have a function a custom function called draw new cat, and it takes in an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And it is going to go ahead and draw one of these cats. Now, as it draws the cats, the cats made up of a circle, a uh, triangle, a regular polygon, two other regular polygons, and then two other circles for the eyes. Um, regular polygon with three sides to make it into a triangle. And on the top part of this draw new cat function, we're not just creating the circle for the head and the two regular polygon triangle ears and just leaving them there. We're actually, as we create them, adding them to the single cat group. And we're doing that for each of these. Um, and we're doing that, the little comment here says, add these to the group so that it will change color when we want to change color. Over here, it says, we're going to just create the regular triangle nose, which is going to be the pink nose over there, the left lime green eye and the right lime green eye. These are just getting stickered on onto the program. They're not going to change color at all. We don't want to change. If, if you watch back at some previous video uh, where I did practice with something similar to this, if I change the entire group, if I add all these to the single cat group and change the color, then we'll lose the definition of the eyeballs and the nose, which we don't want to do. So here, when I draw a new cat, I draw the kind of the, the frame of the cat, the head and the ears, adding that to a single cat group. And here that I add, then I then draw the, uh, the eyes and the nose, but they're just stickered on. We forget about them. We're not going to be able to edit those later on. Next, after I've added the, the head of the cat and the ears of the cat to the single cat group, I add that group as a child to the cat group, which is pretty cool, right? Like, other than just practicing for loops, maybe this is new if you didn't check out my other grouping videos from before, you can create a group of things and then add that group as a single child to a bigger kind of grandfather or grandmother group, which is pretty cool. So this cat group is gonna be holding on to smaller groups. Um, and then at the end of this, after I've added that, my single cat group to um, that cat, to the bigger cat group, I then just set my single cat back to an empty group so it's ready to hold on to a new cat later on. Um, da, 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 da. We'll get to here in a moment. That's our for loop, which is kind of the, the meat of this program. Um, and then over here, what I did is I just drew four cats at the locations 100, 100, 100, 300, 300, 300, and 300, 100, which is how we have the four cats over here. So now that we have the, the baseline of this program kind of figured out. Let's zoom right in over here onto um, our on mouse press function, which has our uh, for loop going over here. Oop, make a, ch a cat change color on a click. Okay, so here's what we're doing. We're still doing that same idea from the last video where we are for each cat in the cat group. What this is gonna do is it's gonna say, hey, I'm gonna loop through every single child or every single object inside of the bigger cat group group that I defined up over here on line two. And then for each of those individuals, I'm gonna, not, I'm gonna use the name cat to hold on to them for a moment. I'm gonna check to see if the cat hits my current mouse X, mouse Y, right? This is all, all of that, keep it in your head. Also, you gotta add to your, to your noggin right now that 
This is all happening only when we click on mouse press and we've got a current X and Y value that we're dealing with. So we're gonna click the button. We have an X and Y that we're looking at. And then we're gonna check for every single cat. So it's gonna go through it because I've drawn four cats. It's gonna go through it four times, looking at each of those cats to see if that cat is hitting the mouse X, mouse Y of where I clicked. And if it does, right, if this if statement is true, we're gonna change that cat to be blue. Um, so let's see it in action. Let me rerun it. Makes the four cats. They're all just our regular happy old Halloween cats. And I click over here, I click over here. It is running through that for loop and if statement, but because nothing's happening, because I'm not clicking onto a cat, you don't see anything react. When I do click on a cat over here though, and I click it, well, every time I on mouse press, it's gonna run through all four of these cats and check to see if the, the time that I just pressed, if I was inside of a cat, if that cat was hit by the mouse X, mouse Y that I currently hit on. If it did, I had told it on uh, line 11, uh, what is that, 21 over there, the support button's kind of getting in the way, um, to change it blue. So it did exactly that, it changed it to blue. If I click on this cat, it'll change that cat to blue. So here's a way that you can create new stickers, things that you kind of put on the board or on your canvas dynamically, and then using a for loop to go through each cat inside that group. As long as, as you make the stickers, you store them inside of some bigger group, you can check and react by only changing one of them, which is like super, super cool. And as we see the next couple of videos where I get more and more detailed making crazier programs here, you can see the cool stuff that you can do with this. Um, and so, you know, in this, I can always draw a new cat, right? I could draw a new cat at, uh, I don't know, 200, 200, and it will make the cats, and now that one will turn blue, or that one will turn blue, where, whichever one I click. Um, I think I'll end the video there. I want you to realize, though, that as I'm doing this, this draw new cat, it's feeling static because I'm just calling it five times. Static meaning like it's there and that's how the program goes. But if I had some way of making the cats, like I could call this draw new cat on maybe, uh, I mean, I guess I could technically call it on mouse press. It would be a little bit weird. Let me try that really, really quick. Video is officially over. Those of us that wanna stay and see my crazy science experiment over here, see if it works, like, Awesome, you know I love you, I'm here for it, if you're here for it. But, you know, this, this might end up being kind of more rambly. So, if that's all you wanted to know, here's, here's a way that we loop through a group of things. And now we're just going to show something else, like, kind of cool too. What have I done? No. Okay, we're over here, that's fine. <laughs> um, okay, so here's my idea. Now I'm, now I'm back into just kind of like figuring things out mode. This is not planned. I'm gonna check for each cat in group if it, if it clicks on it. And then also I guess what I'm gonna just do is after I've checked if I'm making a cat blue or not, I think I can just draw a new cat at my mouse X. Mm, I don't like that. Yeah, this is why I don't like it, mouse Y. You can see that it'll be dynamic here. I can get rid of these over here. Um, I can make some new cats. And then every time I click, I make a new cat. But let's say I click over here on this one, my mouse is on the edge of that. I'm gonna end up making a new, oh. Ooh, hold on, all right, I'm gonna, this is bad, but I'll, I'll fix it right now. I'm gonna make a new cat, um, but I'm also gonna turn that old cat blue, right? Because I clicked on it. Um, kind of gross. I don't wanna make a new cat on top of an old cat and then it's blue, uh-uh, we're not doing that. What we will do though, is I'll check if the cat hits my mouse X, mouse Y, I'll change it blue. And then I'll say, else I will draw that new cat. And so now, now, if I click somewhere, hey, for each cat and cat group, if cat dot hits mouse X, mouse Y, oh, maybe because there's no, let me start by drawing one new cat. Uh, at like 200, 200, maybe it won't enter the for loop until there is some cats to go through. Yes, okay. So quick little thing over there. 
it was not entering the for loop before because before I had drawn a new cat, the group was blank. It just was never going into this for loop whatsoever um, because there was no cats to go through. So it just, it didn't go. Now that I started with one cat for free, it will go through the loop. If I'm not touching a cat when I click, it will draw the new cat over there. But if I am touching a cat that already exists, well, it, hey. Oh, uh, okay, because, right, 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 right. Oh, and that's why the cats are looking weird too, because it's only ever touching one of the cats and then it draws a cat for every other cat that's been made before. Oh, that's gross. We don't want to do it that way. Anyways, I'm done with this little science experiment here. That's why there's an issue of that I was going to say before, like using on mouse press to do this. I might want to maybe have like a little cursor that I can move around with my arrow keys. And when I press space, it'll draw a new cat. And then when I click, I can still turn the cats blue. But the point that I wanted to get across is that you can dynamically make new cats. God, it's taking a while because every single time I'm making that many cats, which is hilarious. Um, but the idea is that I can make new things, and then after I've made those new things, change their color eventually too. Um, but just don't do it this way. I kind of want to have these in two separate um, two separate zones where it's like on mouse press, I'll change the colors, and then I'll use some keyboard stuff to uh, draw the cats. Or maybe I have a, like a button that I press to change it where I'm in like cat creation mode versus cat color changing mode. But that's a longer video. And this video is already long enough. It, it already officially ended like what seems like, I think the official ending of this video ended in less time than I've now spent rambling. So I'm done. Hopefully you got an idea at the very least of how to loop through a group of things. I'll bring this back to its old original glory by getting rid of that grossness. And I'll draw a couple new cats over here. Maybe I'll just go like two more cats at then 100 and 300. Um, just so you can see, hey, here's what we did. We can draw some cats and we can change the colors as we click on them by using our four loops through groups. See you next time.